What is your relationship with your father? The divine masculine energy that has such a big influence in our life because we perceive it as the main energy, the main divine masculine energy that is most important because obviously it's the energy that gave you life. Yet, I dare to say, it's a relationship between yourself, your divine masculine energy, and the divine masculine energy that your father represents in the physical world. Hello, my name is Liliana Martins, and today we're going to be talking about your father, your relationship with him, my father, my relationship with him, our father, our relationship with him, which could also be our father, the higher energy, God, source, universe, or whatever you want. We're going to talk about the divine masculine energy and how we can heal parts of us and how we can transform our lives just by changing some little perceptions or very ingrained perceptions that we might have in our lives. Today I was talking to a friend and interestingly enough, uh, we are having a, a really nice moment uh, together. We were cooking. Interestingly enough, um, you know, she started to have a moment which was very emotional um, in, and in, in conversation and exchanging, you know, um, energies. Um, it came down to a relationship with Divine Masculine. Now, our fathers um, are such amazing figures, such amazing people, yet the majority of us hold wounds that are cut very deep. And those wounds are wounds that we don't even notice how deep they cut, how important they are, but the most um, situation for me that I realize is how much we actually keep repeating the same loop of pain, suffering, pain, suffering, pain, suffering with regards to not just our fathers but also to our parents. I have a, a theory and I always say when I'm in conversation with my friends, family, that in total honesty Want your father, your mother, my mother, my father, uh, just the fact that they have given life to you, to myself, they already done their job. And that's it. Why? Obviously, they, they have a, a, a duty to nurture you until you are an adult and you are independent enough to look after yourself. So why do we demand so much? from our parents, and especially me being a divine feminine in the physical body, uh, yes, I do demand, or I did demand, because my, my, my father has passed away, but have we demand from him? Yes, the, the expectations are very high. It's almost like there is a bag that, you know, doesn't matter how much they pour in, it keeps going out, or, you know, if you are like me, my, my father was mostly absent of my life because he had to go to work. And I know a lot of you have the same story. Some of you don't even, haven't even met your fathers. But still, it's an energy that is there because without it, you wouldn't be alive. And just for that, I personally feel, and please share in the comments your opinion, you don't have to agree with me. I personally feel that just for the fact that I am alive, and they are the reasons that I am alive. That's it. My gratitude goes to them already. If, um, if you met them, if you haven't met them, if they were you, if they're not you. The truth is, if you are an adult today, or at least my truth, the way I see it, they must have done a good job or someone did a good job in bringing you up. But obviously, I'm not going to assume that we all have the same story because we don't. We all have the same experiences, but also, most importantly, we all have different perceptions. We don't all see the world the same way. We don't all interpret the same experience the same way. Yet, what I find is that you might be in pain, and pain is something that we experience all the time. 
it's the suffering. It's the constant suffering and constant staying in the same story, in the same loop, in the same program, in the same pattern that keeps repeating and inflicting pain sometimes that is not necessary in your daily life. Uh, going back to the conversation I had with my friend today, we actually kind of decided to dissect a very simple moment, a very um, something that came up very naturally in conversation, but that ended up showing how wounded actually we still are, uh, most of us, and how happy we are actually sometimes in staying with these wounds because they define who we are and they also um, give us a bit of grounding, you know, for a little bit of melodrama or maybe even a story, you know, something that we can come up with. But like I said, uh, that is my interpretation. That is my friend's interpretation. What is your interpretation? Dissecting, you know, this subject. What we came to a certain conclusion between the two of us, and then we had some other friends involved, but you know, we all have our different opinions, is maybe it's time to heal. Maybe it's time to uh, release the story because deep inside, what we're having is probably just a mirror of your own divine masculine, of my own divine masculine, which is an energy that we all have. We all have a divine masculine energy inside us and a divine feminine energy inside us. Yet the divine masculine inside us, if he's wounded, which the majority of us have a wounded divine masculine, it will always look for the external divine masculine to protect, to, to keep us safe, to give us pr provision, you know, in, a, in, in any sort of way. So we do that first with our fathers because they are the first masculines that we recognize in our physical body. So what, what we have to say is, maybe it's about time, as, we, as adults as we are, that we actually recognize that our fathers did their best they actually were wounded people as well. And, um, and sometimes uh, I wonder, if, have we ever thought to ask them about their stories? Because sometimes the pain and the, and the suffering that we perceive that they have inflicted in us, it's nothing more than their own wounds that they can't deal with. So if we can look for a little bit more understanding and compassion, and maybe even just a, a conversation, and, and sometimes I wonder, um, have you, have you, have I actually stopped to ask our fathers what are their dreams? What are their, their, their expectations of life? Maybe their frustration and the reason that they were upset in a moment with you or with me, my father with me, is that their frustration is that they could not provide for their family the way they wanted or the way they dreamt of or the way they envisioned. So, Maybe it is time to take a moment and look at our fathers and see them as the adults that they are. Maybe have a little bit more compassion for the wounding that they must have received in their lives because if we are wounded, they are also wounded and they also have the same pain and suffering that we are all going through. Yet we demand so much from them, even as adults. It doesn't matter how, how old we are. So today, I invite you to take a different perspective. I invite you to take a moment and actually make a decision to actually just change. Change is just the decision that you can make just to look at your father and look at his life in a different way. Look at them as a person who also has dreams and expectations and maybe his, his frustrations of life and he is a, is a lack of accomplishment for what he had in mind, which he never maybe shared with you, with your mother, with nobody. He just kept it for himself and he kept striving for it or not, or even given up. But sometimes given up is because the expectation is so high and they, like us, you know, they might, they might feel that they were not good enough, their self-esteem is low, they, you know, they had a hard life, you know, the startup, or maybe they had a good life, but they just didn't have the vision. God knows. And that's what I'm inviting you today to have a look is, do you really know? Have you had that conversation with your father? So before we judge, 
before you judge, take a time, take a moment. And what I would say is, as an exercise, look inside yourself and see your wounding, your divine masculine energy wounding, and you probably will understand the divine masculine wounding that your father represents in your life. And that will take a little bit of time and understanding to you, towards yourself. And that self-healing, once you achieve that moment in time where you are at least 80 to 85% healed, you are already healing your relationship with your father. You are already healing that external divine masculine that you so expect to be there for you. Now, I just would like, before I go, to ask you to do a, a very quick exercise. You close your eyes. Now you're going to imagine your divine masculine and your divine feminine turning towards each other. And as they face each other, you, the divine feminine of you is going to actually tell the divine masculine how awesome he is, how beautiful, how brave and how courageous and how well this masculine energy is doing. And you're gonna tap your you're gonna tap your shoulder, your your left hand shoulder, and you're gonna say, Well done. Keep going. You're doing well. I trust you. I believe in you. You can do it, you can achieve it. And then you will understand that those were the words that your father probably would like to have heard from his own self, that he could not actually um, achieve, he could not connect same way that you probably are not connecting with you. So by this understanding, it's easier to forgive and to apply forgiveness to the self, to your father, and to anybody in the world. And when you've done this, when you've done this exercise, I want your divine feminine and your divine masculine energy to actually now turn forward and looking forward in the same direction, hand in hand, you will start a new journey. A new journey where you have now decided that you are going to have a different perspective of life and a different pers perspective of your own father. And that's, and when you can have peace in your heart with that, that's when you are here. I hope this resonates, even if it doesn't. It's just a conversation about divine masculine, divine, and divine feminine energies and dynamics that sometimes passes by, which are very much in our daily life. So if you would like to leave us some feedback or a comment or share your story, please do in the comments box. And also check our website and our social media platform. Remember to like, subscribe and notify so you'll never miss these conversations with us again. In the meantime, I look forward to seeing you next time, so I say goodbye for now.